How's it going guys? My name is Tavares and today we're starting the Ferrari build and it's looking perfect, but only if you ignore all of this. I think this might take a while. Ooh, okay, that's not looking very good. Uh, okay, and we just, there. All right. So if you guys are new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoy it because I'm getting dirty just sitting here. This is my 1995 Ferrari F355 Spider, And I can't believe I'm saying that I own a Ferrari. So it should come as no shock to you guys that this is the cheapest Ferrari in the country by a, a fair bit. And you can tell why. I mean, it's not exactly 100%. But I've gotten a lot of messages asking me where I get the best deals for my cars. And the answer, of course, is a secret. I'm not telling you. Just kidding, it's autotempest.com. If you're not familiar with Autotempest, then you should be, because without it, I wouldn't have bought the cheapest SL55, the cheapest Supra, or the cheapest Lamborghini. It's basically like cheating if you're looking for a bang for the buck cars. What it does is it searches all the top car listing sites in one click. It does all the heavy lifting. So let's say you wanna buy a Mercedes S65 AMG. You're looking for a cheap one. So you go to Mercedes-Benz, you go to model, just go down to, oh my God, there's a lot of Mercedes models. S65 AMG within any mileage because, well, we want the cheapest one in the country. And then you hit search. And immediately I get tons of results. 19,500, that is nothing. Oh my, that's, that's nothing for that. Okay, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. It gives you all these car listings on a silver platter. But if Craigslist is more your type of thing, then you just go up here and you can compare with all of Craigslist, not just your local area. In addition, they have a blog that has guides on how to get the best deals on specific cars. My favorite is uh, this one right here. Uh, depreciation, steals, former 100K vehicles. Yeah, this is a man after my own heart. Look, it's an S65 AMG. So these are all definitely worth a read so you can make sure that when you buy a cheap car, it doesn't have to be an expensive one over time. Be sure to check out Auto Tempest in the link below right now and try to find a Ferrari that's cheaper than mine. Extra points if it wasn't on fire. So now we get to the elephant in the room and that is how much did I pay for all this Ferrari goodness? You'll be pleased to hear that it was only, only, just, you're sitting down, I hope you're sitting down. $18,000. All right, I know 18,000 isn't exactly the best deal in the world, especially for all this kind of nastiness, but I swear I think I got a good deal because all these components, the major ones, I think they might be savable. And today we're gonna find out which are savable and which aren't, and which can be refurbished and which are just charred bundles of nothingness. So the quick 30 second version of this car's history is that it used to be a clean example owned by Tyler Hoover of Hoovy's Garage. Oh boy, we're coming up on a tunnel. <laughs> Holy Moses. Then it was sent to California for Monterey Car Week, where it was driven by Mr. Parker Nierenstein of Vehicle Virgins. That's just a nice partial throttle. Oh my God. Oh, wow. And through no fault of Parker's own, it burst into flames. Then instead of it going to insurance auction, it went to me because I am the kind of guy that would buy a car like this sight unseen. And boy, did I make a good decision there. Now I am no stranger to burnt Italian exotics. I did have a Lamborghini Gallardo that I rebuilt and that did have a little bit of fire damage on one side, but otherwise it was fine. My Lambo is kind of like some pizza rolls you left in the microwave for a little too long. You can still eat them, but they're a little bit charred. Now this is like a lasagna that you left in the oven and then went on vacation. This is so far beyond what I consider savable that 
we're just gonna have to rip everything out and replace everything and also do some modifications. So here's the plan. Now this car has a pretty good side profile. I don't think it's horrible, but I don't think it's the best it could be. What I want is the Berlinetta, the hard top version, because instead of the body line ending right here for the Spider, the Berlinetta goes all the way out to here. It's more rakish, it looks way better. And I also want a little bit more rigidity because I want this car to handle really well. So the focus of this build is gonna to be to make this car the best Canyon Carver possible. And we're gonna do that by removing these gaudy wheels. I really hate these wheels. We're gonna lower it, we're gonna get some custom suspension, and we're gonna do a turbo kit in the back. And the turbo is gonna make this thing even faster than some new Ferraris. Well, some newer Ferraris. So I wanna get it to the power level of somewhere near a 458, so around 500 to 600 horsepower. And that's gonna be no small feat, but I think we can do it because I do have a little bit of experience with turbocharging Italian burnt exotics. So in the next videos, I will be talking about the engine and if it's still usable and what I can salvage from the back of the car. But today I'm gonna to be focusing on the interior, seeing what I can use, what I can't, and what needs to be thrown out immediately. And I'm thinking that last part is gonna be kind of the bulk of the interior today. Let's get to work. Take a look at that. There is a, well, there's a lot of weight reduction going on. It's a super, super Legera. Actually, that's Lamborghini. I took out all the interior bits, took out the seats, the carpet, and everything that made it a spider. We took out the uh, convertible roof because that's not going back on and it, it was broken anyway. So let me give you the bad news and then I can give you the somewhat good news. So I split everything up into stuff I can't use and then stuff I can sort of use and then stuff I can definitely use. And the stuff I can definitely use, that is pretty much non-existent. There is, uh, I think there's like two things that I can use. And most of the stuff that I took off is just trash. So the carpet, I thought I could save it, but apparently it's one big piece. 
and you can see that it's just completely charred. It's hard as a rock and I had to take everything off. So I ended up ripping it and it's just not in good shape. Yeah, that looks like the surface of the moon. So that's uh, not going back in. The same goes for this custom subwoofer enclosure. Even though it looked like somebody took a lot of time making it, definitely is not savable. Even though the MDF is probably okay underneath, the speakers are all busted. So the convertible roof actually does sort of kind of work, but you can see that it's just completely rusted and uh, it doesn't look like it's just surface rust. This looks like it's, it's pretty bad. And also it's bowing over there and we're not gonna keep it a convertible anyway, so that's gonna go in the trash. The seats are something that I thought I could save, at least just the, uh, the back portions, but they're way past it. I mean, I had to take a Sawzall to these guys right here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, so I had to move them in and out. There's only an electric uh, function to move these forward and back. So uh, I had to saw that off and just use a channel lock on here to manually move it forward and back. Now that might be the wrong way to do it, but these seats don't look like I can save them anyway. So these are going in the trash. One, one of the floor mats can be saved that one. It doesn't seem like it has any sort of uh, burn damage. It's just dirty. So this, I'm just, I'll just throw in the wash. And that'll be okay. This one is obviously a little bit burnt, so we're not going to keep that. So that is the only thing I can actually use. Actually, no, this is, this is something that's totally usable. So this, this is the other part that I can definitely use, but this is a very hard to find part. Uh, apparently these are discontinued and you can't find them anywhere. So uh, I'm gonna have to keep this. Maybe I can get a new top, a new skin, and we're gonna see what we can do with that. But it's, uh, yeah, this is the climate control. And as you can see, it's, it's seen better days. So I, I think I should probably throw this out, but I'm not going to just because maybe this will come in handy at some point in the future. The same for this, it's hard to find these guys. And I wanna make sure that uh, all the buttons, like I know what the orientation of the buttons are and these buttons up here. They actually do work, the switches. So maybe I can just get the, these uh, plastic switch surrounds. Also this. So other than this kind of nastiness, I do think that this can be recovered, even though I think I'll probably just get a, a new one of these. Uh, but I'm gonna keep this around just in case. Uh, I don't wanna throw that out just yet. And this, this is the Macintosh head unit. And the head unit is actually very expensive. It's, it's hard to find these things. So I think this is actually okay. Uh, it just looks a little bit uh, worse for wear. So I'm gonna see if I can get another faceplate uh, from the manufacturer. And also this gauge, I think that's a clock. That clock is not going back. Since I'm gonna have a uh, turbo on this car, I wanna have maybe aftermarket gauges. Maybe we could do a boost gauge in there. I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out. But I'm gonna keep this just in case because I wanna know what the fitment is and to make sure that this still works. Coming over here, we have a panel that is really past it, but it has the VIN number on it. This is something that's usually on the dash, but on this car, it's on the steering column. So I'm gonna have to carefully pry this off whenever I get a new part and uh, put this on the new part so I have the right VIN number. So when I go to register the car, they can look at the VIN number and say that this is the same car, even though the parts are different. So coming up next is the surround for the emergency brake. And it actually doesn't look horrible uh, other than that. Um, and that is no bueno, but I think that can be recovered if I don't find another one of these. Uh, the same goes for this. The switches up top are screwed up, but the aluminum panel underneath that's just covered with leather, I think that can be uh, salvaged. So uh, I'm just gonna keep that as well. And the same goes for this. Uh, switches are screwed up, but uh, maybe I can do something with the rest. But the big thing that I was worried about, and it's kind of a bittersweet victory, is this, the gauge cluster. Now the gauge cluster surround is messed up. You can see that it melted right here and there's cracks and, and it just doesn't look very good. But the outside is actually okay. There's no damage whatsoever. But if we turn this around, we'll see that, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's definitely some damage on the back. So this is the uh, speedometer and the speedometer isn't, isn't good. Actually, I think that is not the speedometer. I think that is the, yeah, that's the, uh, that's a tack. So the tack is bad. 
Uh, also, these two gauges, I'm not sure what they are, but these two gauges are completely melted. The odometer right here doesn't look too bad. I think we can just clean that up and that'll work fine. And uh, the same goes for the lights on the, uh, on the side, but on the bottom, it's also very, very melty and uh, yeah, it, it, don't, it don't look very good. So that's gonna be replaced. So all of this, I might do an aftermarket thing because I'm gonna have a standalone, but I'm not sure. Uh, I do want to have this looking sort of OEM, but with a fire like this, beggars can't be choosers. So coming back to the car, we see that there's a gas cap. Oh yeah. So this project is already one up on the Lamborghini. This car is gonna need a lot of work mainly in the wiring harness. I'm gonna have to replace all the wiring from the front to the back. And we can see right here at the gauge cluster, it is not in good shape at all. It's just in, in it, it just looks horrible. Everything melted. The airbag harness is, yeah, that's the airbag harness. I am very surprised that these airbags did not blow. Um, there is no power going to this. And I also disconnected the crash sensor right there. But the good part is the fuse box down there, nothing seems to be melted down there. So there shouldn't be any weird electrical issues there other than what I find in the wiring harness. Also, if we come over here, we can see the accelerator pedal and the line that connects the accelerator is stuck. So I disconnected that just so I can move the accelerator and uh, everything else is just in a real bad state of disrepair. But this actually works. So this is connected to the transmission and that has no issues whatsoever. So we know that the transmission, at least in the shifter mechanism, is okay. Now I will be doing more disassembly. I will be taking off the entire dashboard. But the good thing about this dashboard is that this bottom piece actually undamaged. It's, uh, it's in pretty good condition other than one little piece right there, that little burnt piece. But other than that, it's, it's really good. Uh, it, it cleans up really nicely. The top part, is not very nice. It is bowed out right there. And the airbag is obviously, you can see that. Uh, so that's gonna need to be replaced. Maybe I can do something like flock the dashboard, who knows? And I'm gonna have to replace those vents. And also if you go up here, <laughs> that that is, uh, that is definitely not staying like that. But we are gonna be doing a hard top. So all this is gonna go bye-bye. So um, I'm, I'm really excited about how this is going so far. The car actually is not that hard to take apart. It really is something that you can tell that it's a hand-built car. So there are a lot of screws in weird places. But other than that, it's no harder than your garden variety Honda or uh, Acura or Lexus or something. It's, it really is not that hard. It's just the parts are really expensive. So I wanna answer a question that you guys are probably typing out in the comments right now. And that is about this metal. So the fire was hottest around here and this metal, well, all the paint came off and you can see that it's, it's just rusted and is probably not that strong. However, it is. It's, it's really solid. There's, there's nothing, it doesn't feel any less solid than any other metal, but I'm not too concerned about this because uh, we are going to be doing a hard top. And when we do the hard top, we're gonna uh, make sure that there's no rust and we're gonna be welding onto this and we're gonna give this some more structural support. So we'll probably support it underneath and uh, make sure that it's as rigid as possible. And it's definitely gonna be more rigid than what this car was stock because there's no roof here. So the next thing we're gonna tackle on this car is the engine, and that's gonna happen in the next episode on this car, because I'm, I'm tired and I'm super dirty, and this car has been taken apart enough for one episode, but I'm really excited to see what this engine has in store. I wanna see if it's still usable. I wanna see what is bad on this engine. There's gonna be a lot of that. And also what's good on the engine. There's probably gonna be less of that. Also, if you're a company that wants to perhaps have this car, at SEMA in 2019, um, let me know because I think that could be an interesting thing for this car to do. Let me know in the comments if you want this to be a SEMA car in 2019 with turbos and wheels and hard top and making all kinds of noise and all kinds of power. I'm getting excited already. So that's it for today's episode. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Autotempest.com. It really is a great resource if you're trying to find a cheap car or good project or something a little nicer than this. If you'd like to contact me, you can do so at the social links down below. I love talking to you guys. And if you'd like to buy one of my shirts for a limited time only, knowledge equals horsepower, then you can do so at the Teespring link down below. All the proceeds go directly to charity. So until next time, this is me reminding you guys that on a car like this that is 
a million miles away from being done, but I can see the end in sight and it looks quite glorious indeed. You guys need to wrench every day.